And this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics. We catch up with Bengals safety coach Robert Livingston. I know, I know. The killer bees, the starting safeties are gone. Jesse Bates is an Atlanta Falcon. Von Bell is a Carolina Panther. Whew. Big blow. I thought, I'm going to lose one of them. But losing two? That was worst case scenario. How are they going to pivot? What are they going to do? How are they going to take care of that uh, that void, that hole in the middle of the secondary? Robert Livingston will talk us all off the ledge. He's got <laughs> good answers to everything. And he's a good football coach. And he and Lou Anarumo, they'll find safeties, hopefully one in free agency, and I'm sure they're going to address in the draft and uh, retool. And, of course, Dax Hill, Tyson Anderson, drafted last year. All is not lost. Listen and learn. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you from our studios, which are as good as any. And we are very, very grateful to come to you from these studios. And our special guest is a young football coach that has made his mark in the National Football League. He's been with the Bengals organization in the personnel aspect of things, coaching. He knows this organization as well as anybody does. And he's made major contributions in multiple phases of the organization, the great Robert Livingston. What's up, my man? Laugh, how are you doing? Thanks for having me, bud. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And I know probably all, all Bengal fans are saying, coach, poor coach, man, you, you lose your two starting safeties, the killer bees, Bates and Bell. I mean, it's, it's gotta be uh, a cocktail of emotions. You know, you're, you gotta be obviously disappointed that you lose both of them, but happy for them and, and, and happy that you were part of what they're, um, you know, cashing in on now, I guess, in terms of developing them as players, it's got to be a, a weird dynamic for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, you know, that's this league, obviously you've lived it. Um, and you've been around it a bunch. It's, um, bittersweet is probably the best way to put it. You yeah. Know, I've known these guys for a long time. Um, I mean, I met Jess when he was 20 years old in uh, Winston Salem, took him to lunch, had a little pro day. Um, and just to watch him grow has been so much fun. And then Vaughn came in at a crucial time for us. I mean, candidly, um, you know, kind of righted the ship and, and has worn a sea on his chest the whole time. So it's always hard to see him leave. Um, you know, the other side of it is, is your job, in my opinion, as a position coach, is to put these guys in positions to be successful um, so they can make a billion dollars and uh, have generational wealth and not to worry about anything. So it's a tough day. Obviously, the personal side, this is a people business. Um, I think that gets lost a lot too much. Um, you know, I'm around these guys more than I'm around my kids uh, during the season, and I love them like brothers. Uh, I tell them all the time, you know, they've done more for me in my career and, and personally as well than I've probably ever done for them. So I'm forever indebted, forever grateful for all they've done for me, for what they did in this city, this organization. Um, but it's a new day for them. So it's exciting. Um, but, but it, again, it is bittersweet to, to see them leave, you know, had some great conversations with them. Um, we'll continue to do that. Obviously I'm there for them, lean on them. Um, it, it's never easy to go to a new city with a new coach and, you know, Hey, where do I park? Where do I go? Um, right. that, that's a tough deal. Uh, again, I think the, the beauty of Cincinnati is obviously this community is, is, uh, takes you in, you know, the second year of Bengal, people love you. Um, so that'll be new for them. Just again, new cities, uh, moving around, you know, all that kind of stuff that comes with moving that everybody's been with, but, um, super excited for them. Obviously, you know, uh, we'll be a fan from afar unless we play them. Um, great. but, uh, no, it'll be, it'll be great for them. And, and, you know, it's an opportunity for, for people to step up here. I mean, that's, that's this league. Um, you know, everybody wants an opportunity until they get it and, you know, what you do with that opportunity kind of defines, you know, what you'll be in any profession. So um, it's exciting times, you know, it's uh, it's sad for about a day, but then the sun comes up the next day and you realize you got to go to work and, and try to make the best team you, you can. You know, both, both of them were a big, big plus in terms of, you know, building the culture by character. You know, they're both high character individuals. And 
some of the things they did, you know, uh, the, the player only meetings where they would conduct themselves and, and, and ch check, check each other in terms of if this happens, what's the adjustment in addition to what you guys do as a coaching staff, which is second to none, they're, they're even trying to take it another step, the preparation part of it, the leadership part of it. Well, that doesn't go away. I mean, you know, I, I played with guys that had an impact on me and they either retired, traded, uh, whatever the case of when, when they left, the imprint that they made stayed. I mean, it wasn't like they took all the knowledge that they imparted with them. That stays with everybody else, you know? So, I mean, they were, they were great examples. And, and you, you, like I say, you don't, it's part of the business. You don't want to lose it. But the impact that they made is something that's going to live on. I mean, you got a lot of other guys uh, in that secondary and in your room, in the safety room, that are going to, you know, pick it right up, aren't they? Yeah, no, I think um... – you know, that's kind of the message you convey is, is that they've changed uh, a culture, right? They've changed the team um, in their own kind of general ways, and and that will continue to move forward. Um, you know, with that, it will be different, which is, is life. Yep. I mean, change yep. happens all the time. Um, but, no, they've been obviously a huge part of, of building kind of what we have now. And uh, so, again, just forever indebted to those guys, um, you know, again, professionally, personally, all that stuff, just to see the difference that they've made um in this building you know the way guys work the way guys study um both those guys are you know consummate professionals know as much of the defense as anybody uh, players coaches included i'm sure i mean they're just they're all about business they're all about work um so they will be missed for sure but as we talked about you know if you're a young player that has been behind those guys for for a year two years three years um and you have not picked up on okay, hey, this is how he studies. This is how he takes care of his body. This is what he does to be successful. And shame on you. You know, you've missed a phenomenal opportunity to see how uh, an all-pro player becomes an all-pro player. Um, so, mm -hmm. again, it's an exciting time. It's always tough. Um, but, you know, with change comes opportunity, and, and we'll see kind of who rises to that challenge. With, in anticipation of the possibility, uh, you, you draft a couple of safeties, Dax Hill, Tyson Anderson, um, give us a little bit of a perspective on how they've developed, how they've grown and matured. I know, I know it's very, very early in, in their careers. Tyson Anderson, unfortunately, suffered, you know, some injury um, in, in his first season in the National Football League. But where are these young guys in terms of being able to step up and assume a bigger role as a safety? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, starting with Dax, obviously, um, was put in a variety of positions this year, you know, as a young player to play, right. you know, really four different spots. Um, that's never easy. And, and he never blinked. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see that the, the change in year one to year two, again, as you have lived, I think that first year, you're just trying to keep your head above water, um, right. you know, going on the college circuit here over the course of the last couple of weeks, you know, you tell these guys like, you know, hey, look, your last game you know, was whenever, let's say the middle of January, um, you trained for a couple of weeks, you went to the senior bowl, uh, you trained for a couple of weeks, you go to the combine, you have these pro days, uh, you have rookie mini camp, you have OTAs, you take a little break, and then you play really 28 weeks of, uh, of football. So it, that first year is a long year. And by the end of it, you know, it, it's, uh, it is a grind for sure. So for Dax, I'm just excited to see the growth in year one to year two, obviously uber talented, um, you know, had a great preseason last year. So excited to kind of get him back in one spot and get him going. Uh, I think the sky is the limit for him. Again, he was a first round pick for a reason. Um, right. So it's time for him to step up. And then Tyson, you know, it's a different situation. Uh, unfortunately, the injury happened, as you as you said. Um, so it kind of goes back to the point you made earlier. Dude, if you're not practicing, but you're in the meetings every day, and, and obviously you see how Vaughn, how Jess, how Mike Thomas, how these kind of veterans go about their business, and yep. you haven't changed your routine or you haven't kind of come up with the same routine or something similar to what they do, then shame on you. You know, you've wasted a year or so. Uh, both those guys have good opportunities. Um, you know, it's exciting. I think uh, they'll both be ready as young players. Um, that's all you can ask for is a chance. Um, so it'll be great to kind of get them going, you know, once guys get back in the building and um, get the pieces kind of around it and, and kind of see where it goes. So, um, you know, both those guys, again, going into year two, uh, you can argue Tyson's kind of going into year one and a half, however you want to look at it. Um, but th that's usually when the biggest jump happens. You know, again, year one, it's just kind of, okay, hey, I'm just playing ball. 
And in year two, it's, okay, hey, this is the defense. This is what we got to do. Uh, I've had success this way. I've had failures that way. Um, so it'll be good. And again, um, a young group of guys is, is usually very eager and very coachable, and, and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it, you're right. I mean, year one, it's like you don't know what you don't know, so you're, yeah. just, trying to, you're just trying to get it figured out, you know. And then year two, uh, it's it, it's it's a horse a horse of a different color in that regard. But with Dax Hill, the thing I look at is like he was exposed to, like you said, uh, multiple um, responsibilities in the defense. Mm-hmm. Now he's going to move toward more of just one. But having that knowledge, uh, you know, being exposed to all those things, that, that's invaluable. I mean, going from year one to year two with all of that on the field experience and knowledge that he picked up, I think that can do nothing but help him, you know, and uh, I, I think that's a that's that's a big deal, a big factor. And Tyson Anderson, I you know, looking at him before he got hurt, he definitely he belongs. I mean, th- this dude is he's the real deal, isn't he? Yeah, no, I, I think both those points are true. Um, you know, it's one thing to kind of say you have to protect the nickel when you're playing safety in this coverage. It's another thing to have to be the nickel and be protected. Uh, or be the corner and be protected or be the yep. time linebacker and be protected. So, um, you know, for Dax, again, he's had those live bullets. He's done that. Um, so that is, you know, definite room for growth there. And, and he will make huge strides. There's no doubt about it. And then, yeah, Tyson is, um, you know, he's big, he's long, you know, he's fast. Uh, he was productive in college. Um, so it's just time on task. You know, it, it's it's like anything, you know, if you want to be great at something, you got to work at it. Um, you know, the way that this offseason is structured will be huge for him, you know, to get him in the building, to get him back in the playbook, to get him going through things. Um, you know, to be su- successful in life, really in any field, you, you have to fail first, right? Because you have to know how it doesn't work. So um, it's just time on task. And it, it's like anything, if you want to grow, you, you got to start from the bottom and kind of build your way up. So um, he will definitely have those opportunities. And, you know, the great thing is he was in all the meetings this year. And um you know was around the guys and got to travel some so the nfl kind of uh shiny object that it is um should not be too big for him um because he's already done it and he's already been there and you know candidly he's a he's a great kid that just wants to work and 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 be great i can't tell you how many texts i've already got over the course of the last month um even before all this free agency stuff happened like hey coach i'm doing this this is what we talked about working on and um i I think with anybody laugh you obviously live this you know um you know, the, the end of year meeting um, is, is imperative, in my opinion, because, you know, as a coach, you say, hey, this is what I think you have to work on X, Y and Z. And as a player, uh, it, you know, at least how, how I operate, you know, you got to be able to say, hey, look, coach, this is how I learn. This is that like if you don't know these guys, if you don't learn the learners, then then you're really yeah. just kind of Charlie Brown. You're just talking and nobody knows what you're saying. <laughs> um, so for all these guys, you know, it, it'll be good to get them back in the building and get going. You know, I, I think. Uh, there's 31 other teams that are saying the same thing, right? Spring hopes eternal. It's going to be everybody's year. Um, you know, obviously free agency is, is a big splash and it's great on TV and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, um, whoever shows up here, that's your team. And, and whatever happened the year before doesn't matter. Um, it, it's just you got to get these guys in the locker room. I think it's a huge part of the spring. Uh, Zach and Lou do a phenomenal job of just getting those guys around each other um, as you have lived. Uh, if you have a, a general trust and respect and a love for the person beside you, you'll do anything for them. And uh, that's where those bonds are, are, are really so special. Um, you know, this is the best sport, in my opinion, uh, in the world, because it takes all 11 guys. Uh, you got to be on the same page. And if, if one guy's not carrying his weight, then the whole ship will go down. So um, it'll be great to kind of get these guys around each other. Again, put some more pieces around them, figure out, you know, who we are. I, I think that's uh that's always the fun part about the spring is is if you add this piece, you know, how does that affect the the general feel of the locker room? Because I think it always has to start there. Um, and then, you know, from there, you, you kind of work out and um, all those things will happen. And um, it, it's just a fun time and, and it's exciting. You know, it's it's, it's interesting. I, I think that <clears throat> the organization, uh, eight o'clock in the morning, ownership meets with the head coach, the scouts, you know, and then they meet <laughs> during the day as well. I mean, the, the the contact the interaction is is consistent and, and and you were part of that as well I mean it's it's the ability to pivot Orlando Brown I'll guarantee I, I would bet money that the Bengals weren't thinking oh yeah Orlando Brown there's a target you know we think we're going to be able to but then all of a sudden it happens during the course of free agency and you have a chance to sign Orlando Brown now you have to pivot 
you know, so you were maybe had one plan in place. Now, now you pivot. And in some organizations, it's like trying to turn the Queen Mary. They can't pivot. Yeah. Like, the Bengals pivot quickly, you know, organizationally, and they've done a really good job of that. And I think the Orlando Brown signing is a is another great example of that. I, I I do think and hope though that there's a little bit left in the cap to address the safety position. Uh, <laughs> have you? I, I, I'm sure you've looked at the at the veteran safeties out there. First of all, what do you, what do you think about the thought about being able to pivot? as quickly as this organization does and has. Yeah, I think it's a phenomenal compliment to the people upstairs. Uh, obviously, it starts with, you know, Mr. Brown, Katie, Troy, PB. Um, they're, they're problem solvers, right? They, they, there's a plan A, there's a plan B, there's a plan C. Um, and then it goes to Duke and, and Steve and Mike Potts. You know, they, they can say, okay, hey, um, this road leads us to these opportunities, and this road is the other one. And what if we take a piece of this, a piece of that, and a piece of the other one? Um, so, no, I, I think you're exactly right. The people that can problem solve, they can be big picture thinkers they are who are successful in life in any profession so it's a testament to them um you know they, they do a great job you know taking in information and and trying to make the best decision um maybe not the the sexiest or or you know hey this is going to get the most headlines but you know to get the best group of players around um and then i think it also speaks to kind of where we're at um you know when you have number nine uh lining up under center um you know i think people are drawn to that and it's uh, that's a great that's a great situation to be in. Um, candidly, being here for a long time, it it uh, it beats the alternative for sure. Right. Um, so you know, it's it's an exciting time again. I I know um, it's you know free agency is what it is, and uh, again, being as you said in, in the front office before, um, there's a part of me that uh, you know misses the kind of college scouting days, and that's the best part of of my march is uh, you know flying from CVG to Atlanta airport and getting a rental car and driving somewhere right. um, and, and meeting a kid and, and a 20 or 21 or 22 year old guy and having a conversation and going to lunch and looking them in the eyeballs and seeing what's there and, and watching them work out and talking to his position coach. I mean, those are, those are fun because at the end of the day, that, that's how you build your team. And then when you add a couple pieces in free agency, um, again, it's that much sweeter. So uh, again, just a testament to those guys upstairs and, you know, however this thing plays out, um, nothing but faith and, and all that. I have been working out. You know, I think maybe I could give you three or four plays a game. Um, I would definitely <laughs> sign up for the minimum contract. Uh, Jordan Kovacs on staff, you know, he might be a little bit stronger. I don't know if he sees the game I do. Um, I would probably fail the physical, unfortunately. Um, the way I, I know I would. <laughs> um, but no, it, it'll all work out. You know, it's, um, it, it's a long process, as you know. Um, you know, some of these guys that are signed, you know, yesterday or today, these big, you know, national headline guys, you know, they're on a, three different teams in three different years. And there'll be some guys signed uh, in the middle of June that next thing you know, they're they're somewhere for three or four years and they're a huge piece. So it doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters what you do when you get there. Hey, Dave Lapham here to tell you about one of Cincinnati's fastest growing companies, First Star Logistics. They're currently drafting freight brokers to join their sales team. Apply at FirstStarLogistics.com. First Star Logistics. Yeah, I think I think patience is a virtue, and sure. at this time of year, patience is the most virtuous thing you can you can have because you know, like I said, who would have thunk Orlando Brown was going to be a Cincinnati Bengal? And you mentioned Joe Burrow; it's a prime asset. You want to protect the guy, you know? I mean, it, it makes sense if you can get it done. So let let's talk potentially about uh, some free agents uh, at, at the safety position and, and, and the way that Lou Anarumo, yourself, you guys, your your safeties. They'll play in the box. They'll play high. They'll play slot corner. You know, they, they, versatility is a big deal. And there's probably a handful of guys in veteran free agency at the safety position that have that that type of versatility. And there's quite a few guys, uh, draft possibilities. We might hit on some of those here. But, uh, it, again, with cap dollars, not sure what kind of dollars are left, but C.J. Gardner-Johnson obviously might be pretty expensive. Uh Jimmy Ward with the 49ers played some slot corner, excellent tackler. Uh, Julian Love, um, he's got, you know, deep safety box versatility. He's played the slot as well with the Giants. Guys like that, uh, Taylor Rapp, Thornhill, I guess, just signed. Donovan Wilson, Adrian Amos. There's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of guys out there. Uh, Rodney McLeod, uh, Marcus Epps. Nick Scott is another guy from the Rams that uh, falls into those categories. There, there's... There's a few guys. I mean, are you are you 
is is the versatility aspect of it being able to do a little bit of of all of it a big factor as you're evaluating these veterans? Uh, yeah, really anybody. I, I think um, you know what Lou has done here has obviously been phenomenal. Um, it's kind of a whole part, whole teaching concept. So you learn the whole defense, and you learn your individual part, and then you're back to the whole. So when you do it that way, um, you know it goes back to the Dax Hill conversation. It, it gives you the ability to, to know different spots and to play different roles. Um, so if you're an offensive coordinator or a quarterback, and you come out, and next thing you know, you know Dave Lapham's not at free safety; he's a dime linebacker. Well, hey, what does that mean? Is he blitzing? What's he doing? Who's the known rusher? So it kind of gives you the chance to have the pin last, and that's a testament to Lou and and everything that he has done here. Right. Um, you know, I think the days of uh, you know being a just a true strong safety box player and a true free safety post player, unfortunately, those days are gone. You know, mm -hmm. the offenses are too good. They know too much about you. There's too much pre-snap motion. Um, so the more things you can do, obviously, the better and the more valuable you are. Um, so however that plays out, you know, obviously, there's uh, the the fun part about being a position coach in free agency is you get to watch a lot of teams. Um, so you take things about guys' play style. You take things about, you know, maybe what they're doing um, defensively, schematically. Um, so it's it, it, it's just part of the process. Um, so, you know, that's the pro side. Uh, you, you see a lot of guys. Um, you kind of see – you become so tunnel vision, I think, during the year um, about, hey, th this is – this is who you know Vaughn is. This is who Jess is. This is who Mike Thomas is. Uh, this is who Dax is. And then you kind of look around the league and and you see, you know, maybe what the average player is, what the elite player is, what the guy who you know you can do better is. Um, so it just gives you kind of a general landscape of the NFL, and it's always kind of a good litmus test to kind of get your bearings, and um, that leads to the college side. So. Now, all of a sudden, you've got all this time invested in, uh, okay, hey, I've studied the league. I've studied the position. I know what it takes to make it to be successful. Uh, what are the traits that are, that are the same? And then you go to college, and you, you're looking for traits, candidly. I mean, college football is is fast. It's wide open. You know, the hashes are obviously way wider. It's a different game right now. Um, and they're doing some phenomenal things on offense. So they're asking guys to make tackles in space and to cover and, uh, you know, to to look to the sideline and get a call. And there's a lot of things that are that are really challenging. Um, so that's always a fun process as well. And then just to get, to get to know the guys, you know, the difference in in free agency and, and college scouting is what we talked about before. You know, in college, you can go meet somebody and you have more of a, oh, um, a relationship, I guess you'll say, you know, um, whereas free agency, you know, you make your calls to your buddies, you know, hey, you coach Dave Lapham, what's he like? How does he learn? Um, and you just kind of go from there. So um, there, there's value to both. Um, and But I do think that the, the time invested studying the players and, again, knowing what it is across the landscape of the NFL at that position really gives you a chance to kind of hopefully make the best and, and accurate decision uh, possible. Yeah. And, and you know, I, as a fan, and I know, like you said, um, the decision is going to be made, you know, upstairs you know uh th th that decision making process that that goes on but as a fan you'd like to say man like to see some one veteran mike thomas that's great bring mike thomas back that guy's a natural born huge leader no question about it um huge for the culture another another veteran guy because you know as as a fan you look at it, it's like okay losing one of them Safety, that's going to happen, but boy, both. Oh, that's a that's a nightmare that came true. Losing, and, and then you start to panic. You lose. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. I, well, let's I would talk off the ledge. Let's talk everybody off the ledge. Lab. Yeah, so, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, all right, I mean, so, uh, you know, let's there go are back rumors, to out, City. rumors right. out there. Nick Nick Scott's coming. Rumors out there. Nick Scott's coming to visit. I mean, I'm sure you guys have your visits, you know, all set up. Um, but it makes sense to get a veteran free safety in there to, or a veteran safety, I should say, in in there to. They help a little bit. And if there's enough cap dollars to do it, yeah, I'd like to see that happen. Just, yeah. If it, if it, again, it's a, it's a puzzle piece this time of year. And it's right. You know, if, if you take some from here, you gotta, you know, you gotta get it from somewhere. And um, again, to talk everybody off the ledge, right. I believe Kansas city started or played a, a significant uh, amount of time, six rookies. Yep. Right. And, yep. you know, the sky was falling, they're losing everybody. And then they won the super bowl. So, yep. um, you know, it's our job as coaches. Uh, right, wrong, or indifferent to whoever walks in the door, that, that's our team. And um, so we'll make the most of it. So, um, you know, however that plays out, you know, if Superman comes in and he's going to be the starting strong safety or free safety for us, then hell, my job got easier. 
um, yeah. you know, it's no big deal. So, um, you know, however it plays out, again, I have complete faith in, uh, in the people upstairs that whoever they bring in here will be, you know, everything we need. And it starts with the person. Uh, they'll be great in the locker room. It goes to the meeting room. They'll be great learners. They'll help the young guys. And then, obviously, the last piece is the field, and they'll be great players. So that's our job as coaches, to, to get them to where they need to go. Again, I already told you, my job as a position coach is to do whatever I can do to make these guys successful. And yep. uh, it, it's uh, I, I get it. There are times that you kind of look around. It, it's the scene from uh, somebody sent me the, the, the video, the scene from Pulp Fiction, where the guy's kind of looking around like, hey, where where'd everybody go? Um, right. But, you know, again, this too shall pass. And um, you can't always, you know, clickbait the uh, the headlines on whatever um, March 15th. You know, sometimes those aren't those aren't the guys you want. So it'll all work out, you know, um, however it plays out. Uh, I, I'm not that worried about it. You're, you're right. And I think, as I recall, when the Bengals played the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, three of the four starters in the secondary rookies. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, back, track, yeah. so it was it was both right. corners. Yep. Um, the nickel and then the guy from UC, um, Cook played played significant. Obviously, he had the yep. great interception um, or PBU. Yep. I can't remember which one it was, but um, so yeah. Again, um, if if it's not that, then you got Mike Potts kind of driving the show on college, and um, you know he's responsible for for my kids, and I got no problem with that. He'll do a great job. And if not, you know, I think First Star Logistics maybe needs a sidekick. So if it doesn't go great, then uh, we can we can have a, a dual shot there, and and we'll go. We're always looking for great men like you. There's no <laughs> about that. That's part of our recruiting uh, philosophy. There's no yeah. doubt. So let's let's talk a little bit a draft uh, post Super Bowl. Um, there's a couple of safeties that a lot of uh, quote draft experts are projecting first rounders. Ryan Branch from Alabama. A lot of people are saying is a top ten kind of guy. I mean instincts the way he finishes plays he's an unbelievable tackler i guess they have him for four missed tackles and 173 tackling attempts last year i mean geez he can play in the nickel uh nickel uh, position as well six feet 193 pounds a junior stud isn't he yeah there's a lot of um there's a lot of really talented players out there again we talked about the college game and i think the biggest difference that you see is just the the spread out tempo um i believe you know, the first game um, that I watched is somebody on defense versus the University of Tennessee. And, uh, you know, you turn on the first play and the, the wide receivers are kind of a yard from the sideline and there's stacks and there's motions. And um, just the, the offensive ingenuity in, in college is, is staggering. You know, they're doing a great job getting people in space and so they can give them the ball and, and it's fast and it's happening, you know, at a breakneck pace. So I, I think the, the major thing you can gain from that is you talked about tackling. You know, these DBs in college, they, they got to tackle people in the, op in the open field. Right. Um, and, you know, whether you're playing man or, or quarters or whatever, these guys are a little bit on an island, which is great um because you don't have to kind of oh i wonder if he can do it because you got shit you got 11 or 12 games of these guys doing it so um you know it's a lot of fun to kind of as we talked about that's a little bit of my background that's a lot of my background here um so i enjoy that i enjoy kind of following guys you know shit we got everything on these computers you can watch the first game of the year to the last game of the year and you just kind of see the growth in guys and and maybe it's not as great or maybe they had an injury so you can go back to the year before and um, call your buddy who's the coordinator or the head coach or the defensive backs coach and hey man walk me through the difference in you know week one to week five and and uh, so you know I think college football is in a great spot um, you know I think obviously defensively uh, you're playing with one hand behind your back a little bit there um, yeah. you know again with like the four to a side the unbalanced all that kind of stuff that that comes up so um, you know I just going to some of these colleges and listening to how complex these defenses are. Uh, it really is. Uh, it's amazing, you know, with 20 hours a week that they're getting all this stuff done. So, um, you know, there's a lot of really good players out there. Obviously, no stone will be unturned uh, this part of year. And, and, you know, you're just trying to find the right guys, number one, and then uh, where they fit, number two. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alabama's got two safeties, Brian Branch, Jordan Battle, um, you know, obviously a really a great football team. Antonio Johnson's the other guy. And they project to be a first rounder, but then a lot of other guys are projected, you know, to be day two guys. And yeah. there's going to be good guys in in every round. I guess is the is the point. There's going to be talent available for you. It's, it looks like, in, in different. Uh, how about this kid from uh, Boise State? I saw six four two twenty. Obviously, more of a box guy, tight end to race for a little bit. 
he could even be a linebacker. You talk about at that size, couldn't he? Yeah, I think uh, you know, in addition to you know these colleges having to you know play fast and and be spread out, you know, they're they're doing a lot of that as well. You know, that they're kind of taking um maybe their their best athlete and playing them at nickel sometimes or playing them you know to the field because the hashes are so wide just trying to get the ball back so um there's a lot of guys that have done multiple things um you know you brought up the guy from boise um there's two dbs from from boise at the combine this year um which again speaks to kind of you know coach avalos went back and and they've, they've built great things so it is cool to kind of see the the factories if you will um you know churn them out you know alabama georgia and then also the the small school guys. Um, right. The thing that sucks this time of year, we talk about this being a people business, is uh, you know you kind of fall in love with guys, and it, it's the first time in in their life that they're not they're not in charge, right? They can't commit, right? You right. can't go to you can't go to wherever and and have a great interview with a guy and know he's all about everything you are and your culture and, and hey man, you just want to commit and get this thing over with. <laughs> uh, you know you can. It, it, it's uh, that part is hard. That part is is a challenge. You know, um, hey, we'll get you on the second contract. But it's uh, you know, it, it's it's a fun time. It you, you learn so much about people, about schemes. Um, selfishly, you can kind of spend you know maybe an afternoon with the staff. And you know, we were talking about this yesterday. Where, um, I was down south, and it, it used to be you know things started on Sunday. You know, offensive, defensive. You know, hey, this defense, that this offense started in the NFL. And then I went to college and then I went to high school and not to say that it's completely going from Friday, Saturday to Sunday now, but there are elements that obviously from college have come to the NFL. Um, and you look at some of these like seven on seven leagues that are going, you know, 360 days a year, you know, in the sunshine states, um, these guys have been playing football, you know, right, wrong or indifferent kind of solo sports for a long time. Yeah. Um, so they know how to work. They know a lot of defense. They know a lot of offense. So I think the game's in a great spot. That's always kind of the eye-opening thing for me is you get back off the road and it's just like, hey, like they're getting a lot more stuff than than I thought they were five years ago. Um, so it, 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 the game's in a great spot. So it'll be a fun time. You know, another another uh, university that's got a couple of safety. I mean, Alabama has a pair. Not surprising. Illinois had a heck of a secondary. Jortavius Martin, Sidney Brown, a couple of safeties that are, you know, pretty pretty good football players. That, that, that's got to be a, a, a sight for sore eyes uh, to have two prospects at one stop where you can you can. It helps, it helps your time, no doubt about it, you know, <laughs> as opposed to watching, uh, you know, five games on one guy. You can kind right. of watch five games on um, two. I, I, you know, I get sidetracked. I, I do a poor job. So next thing you know, you almost watch the whole year. Uh, but, no, you mentioned Illinois. That's a, a great – uh, that's a great call. You know, if you look at kind of what they did defensively and what they did culturally, uh, you know, Coach Bieloma came in um, year two of a new regime and they made great strides. And obviously the defensive coordinator went on to Purdue. Um, they promoted from within and they did some really cool things on defense. Um, you know, I think they're they're well coached. They play hard. Obviously, Coach Bielema is is, um, is a tried and true you know leader of men and a, a true CEO head coach and um so yeah that that was fun to see i mean at the last time i was probably watching illinois was the fight in clayton fedulums and it kind of takes you back memory lane yeah. and, um, <laughs> so it's it's always cool um to see guys and uh you know the way that they kind of they grow and, and maybe your buddies in the profession to have success for sure you know it's uh you're, you're coaching a position that's very interesting you know uh, the, the secondary is the last line of defense well the safety position uh in in baseball uh, we're, we're talking the defensive tackles, analogy to baseball. Defensive tackles are, are catchers. The uh, linebackers, inside linebackers are shortstops, and then the, the safeties are center fielders. And in baseball, I mean, you have to have a good center fielder that protects the gaps. I mean, ball gets in the gap, they're running. I mean, they're, they're going to continue to run. A route gets in the gap or gets in a seam, you know, against your your defense – they're going to run, man. They're going to continue to run. You you have to you have to be good at that safety position in terms of getting those uh, those seams and those those uh, alleyways closed down and everything. So, you know, I guess everybody's the panic that you talked about. Everybody's out in the ledge. <laughs> we lost both <laughs> our guys. But you 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 got the safety position is so different. Back you know when your daddy played safety or whatever. I mean, it has evolved. It's it is such a different position. Yeah, I think it it kind of speaks to. You know what the game has done. You right. Know, we talked about it earlier. 
the days of you know a strong safety just playing in the box and um, having 145 tackles and uh, right. I mean those days are done unfortunately. Um, so yeah, you got to be multiple. You got to be able to do multiple things. Um, you know, I, I think uh, selfishly, uh, it's a great challenge. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time. You know, if you're a three technique and you're out of your gap, you know, nobody knows probably about the position coach and and you get yelled at on on Monday morning. Um, if you're a linebacker and maybe you miss a fit, you know, people are unsure. Hey, how'd they get through there? If you're a DB and you get beat deep or you miss a tackle on the open field, everybody knows it's on sports center. It's whatever. So, you know, with that weight comes a great responsibility. And I think the, the guys that are successful, they thrive on that. They want that pressure. They want kind of always, Hey, I, if it gets by me, it's done. Um, because with that weight comes great responsibility. And, um, you know, I, I think that the great ones, they want to be in that position, you know, Hey, I got it, you know, I'll, I'll take care of the team. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, it's just, you know, again, you, you watch these free agents and so maybe it's a division that, that you haven't seen much of that there was not a lot of crossover. And, and so you're watching somebody from some team and maybe you haven't seen that offense they're going against. And next thing you know, it's like, Whoa, is this coming down the pipe? You know, is, is this what we got to get ready for? So then you go to, okay, who's our schedule next year? And it just gives you ideas. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta be able to, to do multiple things, especially here Again, it's a testament to Lou and everything he's brought and everything he's built. Um, you know, the, you're going to know multiple spots and uh, it's our job to kind of get you to, to be able to do that. Well, I'll tell you what, you did a, done a hell of a job, um, coaching these guys up. You, you've the, the Bengals are on a, on a nice run. I know Orlando Brown is a happy man right now. 64 million bucks, 31 signing bonus, 31 million an NFL record to, to a tackle that speaks volumes about the Bengals commitment to, uh, to protect number nine. Who's a, uh, who's the, a gem, obviously, but man, hopefully they left enough room in the it's enough money in the vault to get you a safety and free agency, and then address in the draft as well. Because if anybody can coach them up and make them great players, it's my man Robert Livingston. Well, thank you very much. Ed. It'll all work out. Everybody, in the in the words of the great Aaron Rodgers, just relax. Um, you know, this, this too shall pass. It'll all it'll all be good. Uh, I may have, have to go in that dark it. room like Aaron Rodgers did. I meant to go in the dark room for a while. Well, we, you know, we, we've got four kids at the house now, so I would sign up to go to a dark room uh, just about every day. You're uh, a busy man. The idea of, of uh, you know, getting a little sleep or, you know, not having people, you know, you wake up in the bed, like, who's in here today? What's going on? Um, so, no, it'll be, it'll be fine. You know, obviously upstairs is, um, I've got complete faith in them and, and whatever happens, happens. I appreciate your time. And more importantly, I appreciate your efforts. You're doing a great job for the Cincinnati Bengals and have done so for many years. Have the best day you ever had, sir. Thanks, Lap. Appreciate you, man. You do a great job. I tell you this all the time. Um, you know, you're so much fun to be around, and it's uh, it's a phenomenal gift to kind of have you doing what you're doing. So very grateful for all you do. And, um, you know, people don't know this, but the, the coach's box is right beside the radio box. And uh, <laughs> when you're rolling, dude, um, you are so much fun to, to hear. You know, my headset's on my, my right ear, so you're to my left. So um, <laughs> when you get yelling and screaming, uh, I know it's a good day. So uh, I appreciate you. Thanks for everything. And everybody have a great day. Thanks, Robert. You're the best. All right. Thanks, man. See you. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team